What's up, people? This is Nature Girl 30 here, and as you can hear, my voice still sounds bad after WrestleMania last night, but I consider it a badge of honor. I'm giving you my Raw review for April 2nd. This is the Raw after WrestleMania, so things are supposed to be dif different. Things are supposed to be changing. Things are supposed to be fresh and new. Did it happen? A little bit. Not totally. The show wasn't a total game changer, but there were a few things that were awesome to see. Now, I'm going to go into the first thing. Uh, Jolly and I did have his little segment at first with CM Punk coming out and, you know, calling him a tool bag and stuff like that or tool, whatever. And But the things that actually did define the night for me was, number one, The Rock. The Rock actually came out at the beginning of the show, which was awesome. He came out, he did his little segment, he was thanking John Cena after what happened last night, after his match last night, which I think was pretty much a class act. And it was really nice to have The Rock come out. But the biggest shocker for me is the fact that The Rock is saying that he wants to be WWE champion again. Why? Dude, you've been there, you've done that, you got the t-shirt. There's really no reason for you to be a champion again. And there's no reason for you to be a full-timer anyway. Because you're on the verge of being in the Hall of Fame. It doesn't make any sense. So I know that if this is going to happen, this is going to be brief. It's going to be really, really brief. And I'm really hoping that The Rock doesn't try to become champion again. And the reason why I'm saying this is because The Rock has already had his moment. He's had his heyday. He had his point to whether he was on top. He was like the, the apex predator, unlike Randy Orton, which is I guess is at this point, but whatever. But the point is, The Rock had his, his moment in the sun. He had his time to shine. It's time for the younger talent to actually come out. If The Rock comes back, it's going to suck all that, all that attention away from the younger talent, and it's going to put it right on The Rock. And especially when The Rock becomes champion, no. That's going to definitely take all the attention away from everybody else and put it on The Rock. That's the reason why I was happy when The Rock was temporary. I don't want The Rock to come back because it's just going to completely just skew everything and make The Rock the most popular over everybody. He's had his moment and it needs to stop. He's had his heyday. He needs to stay where he is. And another thing that was different tonight that wasn't necessarily a game changer, but it did make you think, Alberto Del Rio came back. And which was awesome. I actually did miss him. Don't get me wrong. The first time I saw Alberto Del Rio, yeah, he got on my nerves. But I'm not going to lie. The guy got finesse. And he was an awesome heel before Edge retired. So, honestly, it made me really happy to see him again. I really did miss Alberto Del Rio. And the fact is, it made me even more excited to see a possible feud with him and Sheamus. Because he really does want to be a champion again. And since Sheamus is now the champion, I'm actually seeing a feud is going to build up. Who would better be in a, in a feud with Sheamus than Alberto Del Rio? Or possibly Cody Rhodes. But either or, Alberto Del Rio, I love him as a heel, and it's so great to see him come back, especially with those gorgeous cars he drives out. But the one thing that kind of got me was the fact that Daniel Bryan didn't say anything. He was actually behind the scenes watching uh, watching on the, on the monitor with AJ. I mean, really? I actually assumed that he was going to blame AJ's kiss for him losing the title or something entertaining like that. But Daniel Bryan just sat there and stared. I mean, really? You thought that he was actually going to come out and interrupt and something like that, kind of keep it interesting. But he was behind the scenes, which was kind of dull. But honestly, there were a couple of matches in there, especially there was a match with Santina Morella and then um, Santina Morella versus uh, uh, Jack Swagger and Dolph Ziggler. Now, this is the one thing I don't really understand about this. Dolph Ziggler is constantly being downgraded every single time. He gets promoted, and then he gets downgraded. He gets promoted, then he gets downgraded. And the reason why I'm saying downgraded is the fact that he's putting uh, he's on the same level as Jack Swagger. And Jack Swagger is not on that same level as Dolph Ziggler. Dolph Ziggler should be up here. Jack Swagger should be here. He needs more help from Vicky than, than Dolph Ziggler. And for some reason... Dolph Ziggler keeps getting brought down. He either gets put in tag team matches with Jack Swagger or the fact that he keeps trying to be in U.S. title matches. He should be at the main event. He should be trying to get the WWE title now or at least get a championship or, or, or at least the IC title. Why does he keep getting downgraded every single time? I don't get it. I don't know what they're going to do with him. But they constantly keep changing their minds, and it's kind of annoying. I mean, I am not a big fan of Dolph Ziggler, 
But I know the guy has talent, and I know the guy can actually bring it. So why it just doesn't make any sense why they're doing that to him. And another thing, with Santino Morella, I like this match because it really does show Santino's talent. It really brings out the fact that he is more than comic relief. The guy held his own between two people in a handicap match. You wouldn't see Santino back in the day doing that. You would usually see him taking a fall and getting pinned, and that's about it. But Santino Morella is actually becoming a true championship holder. He has definitely done his best to keep his title. He has fought for his title, and he's won. And that's actually what makes me happy. He was a great tag team partner. He was a, he was a great tag team title holder. He's going to be even better um, U.S. title holder, and I'm hoping he goes back to the IC Championship. I don't think that he's going to be in a WWE Championship running anytime soon, but he does do a good job when it comes to actually having his title, and he's doing a, he's doing a good job holding his own. And I'm happy they actually did incorporate that. Now, um, Sheamus actually did have his little moment in the sun when it came to kicking uh, Alberto Del Rio in the head, which does kind of make me happy about that, which that possible feud that I just talked about. But maybe it'll be like a, a more than one thing when it comes to those guys. But honestly, the one thing I could say about the CM Punk versus uh, Mark Henry match is that it went way too long in my eyes. It really did. It went through like three commercial breaks. This was a match that should not have been as long as it was, as it was in my opinion. It's just something that should have ended really, really quick. But then there's another thing that confuses me. It's the fact that Chris Jericho lost last night. He lost at WrestleMania. Fair and square, he tapped out to CM Punk when he put on the Anaconda Vice. So why in the world are they bringing up this feud again? After WrestleMania, it should be squashed. It should be done. It shouldn't be doing it anymore. You know, it's actually settled. It's done. You know, why are you doing it again? I don't get it. And then the fact that he poured wine on his head, that crap had to burn. I'm not going to lie. That had to burn bad. Whatever the wine that was. But regardless, it just seems like they're, they're rebuilding this feud, which is something that really should have just died. And then the whole night, they practically showed clips of WrestleMania. I didn't want that to be the entire show, though. I usually went after a pay-per-view. They show what was on the WWE.com website, and then they show, like, you know, tell everybody thank you for having so many views, and then that'll be about it. They show clips of WrestleMania the entire night that practically sucked everything away from the show. So it didn't make any sense for them to do that. And and also led up, they were actually just teasing and leading up to how John Cena's response at the last night after beating The Rock. But honestly, John Cena came out with the whole stale thing. And yes, he was still wearing the green he wore last night. And wearing green in Miami after Miami lost to Celtics is something that was like definitely a poke in Miami in my opinion. But either or... John Cena saying that he's not going to change. And after he says that, here comes Brock Lesnar coming out. And I'm not going to lie, I miss my powerhouse brawlers, baby. I miss them so much. My favorite pop powerhouse brawlers was Batista, Goldberg, and Brock Lesnar. Those guys were awesome. You don't see powerhouse brawlers no more, man. Seriously. And I'm so happy to see him back. Because I'm happy that he's going to start a feud with John Cena. Because maybe John Cena will change, start stepping up his game, and things are going to be a little bit more different. He is definitely bringing some flavor back to the WWE and back to Raw, which really does make me happy. So there were three things that actually did change tonight, but the entire show was still the same. I mean, the, the Raw after WrestleMania is supposed to be the game changer. There was nothing really changing about this Raw, and that's the only thing that bothered me about it. Besides the fact that I liked The Rock's promo, besides the fact that I liked Alberto Del Rio's return, and yes, we saw Lord Tensai for the first time, even though it's Prince Albert, and I think that's really insulting and probably borderline prejudice or racist, but, and, but also the fact that Alex Riley got completely squashed again doesn't really sit well with me either. But then I really didn't care much for Lord Tensai's character. That's something that's going to die out too. But, and also, it all made me happy that I see that the Funkasaurus has actually um, came to Santino Morella's aid, possibly tag team maybe. I don't know. I'm looking forward to that too because they probably have great in-ring chemistry. They probably have, you know, great moments in the ring. So I am looking forward to that. But all in all, I got to give this show a D minus. I'm sorry. When it comes to WrestleMania and it comes to the Raw after WrestleMania, you got to step up your game. You got to change things around. You can't make things the same. Even though they have a few segments that actually did change and was entertaining, the entire show was a D minus to me. That is my verdict, and I'm sticking to it. This is the Nature Girl 30 signing off.
Peace. And I'm going to rest my voice because that's all I can do. Later. Mm.